for simplicity. You kind of get the breakdown. Let's remove smart bot real quick and we'll bring it back in. Don't worry. Bring this, click on this again, Let's hit new. Uh, we'll do capsule. Just want you to understand and kind of get the bare basics of it. You can change the speed and direction. This is kind of good for like thin gauntlet where it's a very popular scenario across all lame trainers where you want to hit a really small target. You can change the speed. This changes its overall speed. So let's say I want to do three six, right? Let's say I want to add a lot of hit points to this. I'm going to add 300 hit points. Now what I want to do is on death, I want it to respawn. Let's give it a name. We're going to call it Daz Tracking Bot. Hit save. We're not done yet, but I want you to see it in game real quick. Okay. See, it's a big boy. And it moves. You might need to adjust your volume, which is okay. I know I just turned it up for a moment. I'm going to turn it down another way. So you have the bot where it moves left and right, left and right, and, sh and strafes. And you can change its waypoints so it moves to different locations. And we're going to talk about waypoints here when we do the flick scenario. You know, let's do something a little more interesting with it. Make it even more, let's say you're trying to really hone in on your mouse control, right? Really get that in. So let's click on the bot one more time. And we're going to change its size. We're going to change. Let's do scalar. Let's do the height. We're going to make it a little taller. We're going to change its width so it's really thin. So when you see it go to an angle, I'm going to do point three and depth I'm going to do point three make it really small so I hit save let's go hop in so we're gonna make it a really skinny one so it really hones in on that mouse control so you're making smaller movements right might have made it a little too tall it's okay I can make it thinner but notice how you can change the spot which makes it a lot harder to track right I mean you really start to have to hone in on that muscle control and you can you can change the speed of this as you're kind of building out a tracking scenario because thin gauntlet is so it's so good. You can change the shape, and you, as you saw with the bots, let's bring this back up. I would like to add, let's move that around. And you can bring it a little closer if you like. You can kind of move this around. Let us do, excuse me, a, let's do load, dash tracking bot, add a modifier. There we go. I want to change, let's just keep it at a height of one. Let's see how thin we can get it. And I'm going to change its speed so it feels a lot more manageable, so it's not overwhelming. I'm going to change it to, let's say, 1 to 2. Let's try that. Really get used to that small, refined movement as you go back and forth. You can speed this up, too. You can keep speeding this up and changing it up. Yeah, there we go. That's a nice, thin target. That's not half bad if you're really trying to work on like your mouse control in the center of this. Wow, this is actually a really good one. I really like this one. This kind of reminds me of Thin Gauntlet. You can keep changing it, adding different bots, but this is a nice, simple tracking scenario. I think some of them have existed as Thin Gauntlet. Like, it's just hitting a really, really small target. I probably even need to go even slower on this, but this is a really good one. Realize how much you move your hand with, my, with your mouse control and trying to hit something this small and then track it. There you go. Okay, my hand kind of... I'm over here trying to flick way too much, but this is why we create scenarios. We realize how little you need to move to go back and forth. It, it's probably a little sharp on its on its edges, which you can also change if you want to change its distance and how sharp. It cuts the corner. Let's go to this. Direction speed. So let's say it switches around. Let's do 50. And there's so much you can do here. There's so many objects. You can even put an object so it keeps like peaking. If you'd like, so it like peeks around a corner. This is this is why I recommend those bots. We can put them into, and we're kind of getting down to the basics, where you can put it in Valheim, or you can put it in Bind. And there you go. So it's a lot, the direction is a lot slower, right? You can speed this up so that then you, the reaction time needed is not as dramatic. And if you'd like, you can even change this to where it's more of a click time scenario, which is why you have the custom weapons. Which are really really good. Like even there, that was that was a pretty good solid scenario. Like I, I mean, that's something I would actually I could see myself practicing on. And you can kind of get a lot more granular, a lot more unique with it. You can change this to let's say I don't know, 
a revolver, a pistol, or a deagle. You know, you can even just kind of go from the basic one. You can change the length of time. So maybe it's like three minutes. You have to do it if you just want like an intense one. So you can change that, and you know, you can you know render what you see. So then you have the map. I call this tracking scenarios. You can change the elevation if you like. There's a there's so much you can do here, but try not to get overwhelmed. Notice how simple we kept it with just a bot, right? And now we're going to add in a flick scenario, one where you're just going to flick to two, di two different targets. You can put these in different areas too. I know one would be trying to work on your 180 spin, and let's try to, let's try to do that. Let's do a flicking on a 180. Let's say you're playing like Apex Legends or Quake, and you're having to constantly worry about flicking to 180, which is probably not as good as like CS experience, but maybe good for other video games. So let's let's delete this bot, and we're going to add in. waypoint spawner because we're going to add in two different scenarios here we're going to add in we're going to put them within like in front of us here right let me do new i'm going to add in headshot let's do smart bot let's put in a bot here let's do headshot like i mentioned Let's do flicking. Flicking 180. 180. Let's do a nice 181. I know I was setting one up earlier for fun, and I deleted all of them just because I wanted to start fresh. Death on respawn. Let's see. What type of scenario do we want for this? Hmm. Which one do we want to do? Let's do Let's do jumping. Had, had a little bit. 180 and jumping? That, that, sounds, like, that sounds like a nightmare. So you have one HP on this, right? We're gonna have it spawn at the start and you can add in, so, so we're gonna hit save on this. We're gonna call it flick 180. We're gonna have random available waypoints. We're gonna add some waypoints onto this so it gets set up. We're gonna skip the last spawn on random. And then we're gonna add some waypoints where we want it to spawn right in front of us. And we're gonna put the size. We're gonna change the size to two and then we're going to add both these waypoints in. So how do we add those waypoints? Well, we're going to add the waypoints under waypoints. So we're going to add one of them right here. Boom. Easy. Done. And we're going to add another waypoint in the back. So we're going to have a nice flick 180. I just came over that because I, I, I was just thinking about, you know, I haven't seen a whole lot of these. And then one that's kind of like jumping kind of throws you off a bit. So you click on this again. And remember, we had the modifier here. So we're going to add waypoint one. And I might need to adjust this again to get it just right. Let's see what that looks like. Might need to adjust this. See how this is a nice 180? This is good for my sensitivity to kind of practice. I probably should get them to move, but this is actually pretty good. It's just doing a nice 180 flick. You can change it. You can actually change this so so you don't have to wait for it. So we're going to change the scenario so then when they spawn, there is no downtime on it. Delayed start, start on spawn, flick 180. Let's see here. I guess they're good. And well, let's, let's add a little bit more variety to it. We can have them move around a little bit if we'd like. Let's see here. Let's exit out of this. I guess we do have it not delayed at start. We can change the bot though. So let's uh Oh, didn't mean to move that. Let's go to the settings here. Let's have it move for a little bit. We can have it move forward, backwards, kind of adjust, kind of do a little bit more of unique things here. Vertical time on max, to three let's not let's add there we go. There's the delay. We don't want any delay on this. Let me hit save and let me show you this now. And then we can add a little bit of a jump and add a little bit more versatility to it. And you can keep moving them in different areas. So it just kind of throws you off. I have it spawning behind me first. See how it's immediately jumping and you have to flick. I might actually save this one. This is not half bad. Especially because I'm on, like I mentioned at the start of this that I'm on a lower sensitivity and I apologize if you can hear my mouse but as I throw my arm across it. I 
this really gets you. You know, this is really good for Apex. Everyone always asks the question, how do you get used to your sensitivity? Well, doing a nice 180 and seeing if it's too slow, if you have enough mouse pad, this is a really good test and setting this up. I actually, I might do a video on this. I might actually do a guide and say, how do you understand your full inches per 360? You can change this so they bounce higher, so they don't bounce as high. So they can, even you can create waypoints on where they go to and get really complex. You could say, I want it to go here, here, and like I want it to move at mock speed and like scare me as it's just jumping around. You can, you can have some fun with this and really, really play with it and create more waypoints, change the position, change the scaling and just, you know, essentially have at it. Because there's a lot you can do with the bot. So if we come back, you can say it starts at three. Let's say shoots up in the air. Really get your sensitivity going. Let's just say it just skyrockets over to the move to the moon. Interval time to where it jumps. Let's say this is point one. You can just change these, and and it really starts to spice up the scenario, and really changes things for you. Let's go back in. So just remember, when you make changes within the Creator Studio so it doesn't get overwhelming, try to make small changes and work your way up. Don't try to be too ambitious at the start. Like, as we start to do this, you can put these on platforms. You can create a little platform, you know, have a little more fun. Realize, look at that, look at that guy. He's flying up in the air. My man is going to the moon, just like the stocks. It's a really good scenario for as I'm throwing my arm across because I don't have the fastest sensitivity. Ooh, man, they really fly. I think I put it too high, but, you know, this is why you have these settings to really kind of change it up and throw you off. But this is this is, this is is a fun scenario. This is good. And it, it, remember, you can change the, the sky, too. So let's say the blue really bothers you. You can change the sky. You can change the terrain. You can add objects. We can add a little... We'll have a little fun here. You can add some other little, little things in the way. You can add a shape. Maybe put a cube, maybe put a cylinder, you know, decorate. At this point, once you create your scenario, you can start to decorate. It's like playing The Sims. You can put maybe staircases where you want the bot to, to spawn. And there's a it's stick, so it can be sticky. You can change these so that it's higher up, so it starts at a, at a higher point, if you like. You can make this bigger. You can scale it. Really move these things around and make it a lot more complex. But like I said, this is where you start to have your fun, right? This is where you get to... To really experiment. Yeah, let's see, let's move this on top of here. I need to make this a lot wider though. Let's move around the camera. There we go. Got a got a thick, nice thick little staircase. Let's put them in the ground there. Let's bring the waypoint. I'm so used to playing like games like Roller Coaster Tycoon and moving these things around. It can be a little. You can do smart uh, where, where it moves it specifically. So then, if you're wondering where this will spawn, let's see here. Let's go up. I'm doing it more the archaic way. So just don't mind me. And then we move it right there. And there's a sticky. Where you can make it sticky and make it smart on objects. You can mess with that. But as you get better with this, you start to improve. This is kind of the bare bones version of it. So I hit play. Let me hop in there. You're going to see those staircases over now and now to the right. You can change the color of them. Really organize this. Really make this yours. Make this your scenario. What you need to work on. So I'm going to flick. Ooh, flew over there. There he's over there. So this is like a quake scenario, man. As you're flicking between various targets. You can you don't have to make it shoot up to the sky either, like I mentioned. You can change its its projectile and how much it's going up in the air. And you can even do them individually if you like. Let's say I only wanted to bounce just a little bit, make it more of a, a micro scenario. Let's say we really wanted to f f work on a, a nice broad movement and make this a, an interesting mini flick. You get go for long flick, then mini flick, and like really start to test out those those arms you know what i mean and then go right into a small movement that's probably one that i would personally want to work on hit save hit play go right back in it recommend saving your work and let's hop into it here see how it's little i might need to do it a little bit higher actually but you see you see what i mean if you can get it just a little bit higher up there so then there's a little bit more 
oomph to it. You could even change where hit points change and everything. You get really granular with it. Right now, I figured I kind of keep it a little bare bones. But you do have that option available for you. Let's, I just want to get the boss just right now. Now that I'm kind of in it. Now I'm addicted to it. Now I want to see it just kind of done at the end of the day. Let's do one to 2.3 and just throw a random interval there. Really throw ourselves off and we hit play. And then we're going to go right into it. And remember, you can put these bots. So if you think you can copy bind. There you go. See how they're bouncing a little bit? Go from a broad movement to a micro one. Because sometimes you... Like, let's say you have issues with... Because AimLab is really good about telling you where your weak spot is, whether it's on the left or on the right. Let's say you want to focus specifically on the left and right movement. This would be one of the, like with a broader stroke. Or let's say it's a micro movement. You move them right next to each other. You go boom, boom, boom. Or you add like 10 different bots where it goes here, here, here. And you want to randomize it and change it. You can definitely do that. And hopefully by showcasing this and enjoying going back and forth between various targets, you see just how not overwhelming it is. I know I kind of started off maybe overwhelming with just putting walls. Like <laughs> the time to make something pretty to put yourself in a little box. And then I know that they showcase memes like you want to throw a giraffe in there. Let's throw a giraffe. Let me see if I can throw a giraffe in here. Do they have those? I know there's the stationary. Let's put a giraffe because it's cute. Buildings and structure. Oh, decorative. There we go. Let's do village. Let's do nature. City animals. You can put a cat in here. That's crazy. I know the giraffe. I like the giraffe. I'm looking for the giraffe. Jungle animals. There it is. There's a giraffe. And there you go. You got yourself a little giraffe. Let's make it a big giraffe. Just for the memes right before we wrap up here. Make a long giraffe. Make a chunky one. Well, let's, let's add two giraffes. We're going to make a chunky one. And then we're going to make a, a long boy one. There we go. You hop in game. You can move around. I, 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 I so much prefer staying stationary. That's a personal preference whenever I'm aiming. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You have such two dramatic versions. You have such a long. You got long boy and you got a short boy. And you have both of them there, and they're yours forever. You can shoot them, but it won't do anything. Just drop your accuracy. And there you have it. So we've covered for the past. We covered quite a bit today. We discussed. We were reviewing some of the maps. Remember, you can change the maps and add. Your, let's say you wanted to add a giraffe onto Valhaven, if you like. Now we discussed buying. We discussed the Rainbow Six Siege map, Valhaven. You talked about the custom weapons, which we discussed briefly. You know, you have a lot of weapons. You can change. You can even create your own recoil, if you like, with various weapons that you make, and they'll all show up here. You know, you have the scar, lightning gun, orb. You know, pulse rifles, anything. Anything and everything is here. I mean, there's so much customization. It may, some of it may take a little longer, but in the long run, I mean, it's yours. And it, 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 aim lab becomes more of your tool, right? Now we kind of discussed briefly smart bots and what it can do. Uh, just kind of covered a little bit more high level, and you can add the textures here. So we click on this and go to the bot. And let's say we were to add another one back in. But SmartBot is there to kind of add some intervals, to kind of do a little bit more than just having to constantly program everything. But of course, even on the list, as you look at the various bots, and let's bring another one of these in. Let's go to Point Spawner. I'm going to strike a bot here. Let's go to New. SmartBot, check that off. Let's say you want to do, let's do Humanoid. Smartbot overrides 80-80, dodge, jump, orbit. You know, it, it'll it'll do some things for you. It's very advanced, and there's so much here. Look at this. There's so much here that it can do for you. So you don't have to always just... So it just doesn't feel so cookie cutter. The Smartbot does add so much versatility to it. So definitely check that out, especially with the 80-80 one. I think that one's probably the coolest. That one makes a whole lot of sense, but that one is here. And it's where you see when you type in new... Let's actually go to load. And I know you see the community has created a lot of these. Dust 2 straight bot, HQ bot, HUD smooth, strafe apex sphere. So if you're into the apex legends, like we we're talking about a tracking scenario. I know I did one that was kind of bare where you're looking for like more thin gauntlet, which is in my opinion, the most famous of like improving tracking. But you know, if you're into apex like I am, then you have that bot there. We discussed the five tracking scenarios within siege which were siege entry, 
Siege C4 Arc, Siege Capacity. We had Siege Detection Shot, Siege Audio Spatial 45. And then, of course, we discussed the new tracking scenarios that are really beneficial to help you out, which is Sphere Track 90, Arc Track, Star Track, Micro Start Track, and the Reactive Track. All there available for you as well. We just reviewed some of the crosshair settings, and then we built a flicking scenario and a tracking scenario. So we really did a lot here. And then we ended up here at the very end where we have this gigantic long giraffe. So we'll say goodbye to George here. We thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a whole lot. Hopefully we were able to give a lot of tips, a lot of advice as you watched. And we're able to provide a lot of context of things. We really look forward. Don't be intimidated if you're beginner, intermediate, or advanced. Just go and have some fun. Learn a whole lot about AimLab. It's free. Can't really beat free when you can add a free giraffe named George. We appreciate you guys for watching. We look forward to seeing you guys all next time. Thank you guys for watching. We look forward to seeing you guys all next time. Hello and welcome to AimLab. Today we're going to cover quite a bit. If you're a beginner, if you're intermediate, advanced, we welcome you because today we're going to review some of the Creator Studio's features such as various maps such as Bind or Valhaven. We're going to discuss the custom weapons in the Creator Studio, some of the smart bots, we're going to enjoy a lot of the tasks. We're going to go through them together. We're going to talk about the pros and cons of what you can learn. We're going to review some of the crosshair outlines. We're going to build a flicking task within the Creator Studio. Or we're even going to build a tracking task. And don't worry why all of this is going to feel very overwhelming at first. We're going to take it slow. We're going to enjoy the journey together. And it doesn't matter if you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced user. Because today we're going to break down everything with an aim lab that I discussed. And make sure that this takes you on a healthy journey as you look to improve your aim. Now remember some of the biggest things. Let's go ahead and add a few of these scenarios. We're going to start with some of the fun stuff first. We're going to start with the scenarios. Remember that even if you go to a gym, I'm going to relate this heavily towards being and working out in a gym. Maybe you're one of the fastest runners in the world. Maybe perhaps you can lift the most. A lot of these scenarios you will find perhaps you are one of the fastest runners. Maybe you're just one of the fastest at flicking. But maybe you don't have the speed to really back it up maybe you need to work on that maybe to work in your precision maybe you need to work overall your goal is to improve your mouse control and the plus side even with aim lab is that you can utilize controller functionality so let's start with some of these scenarios let's go with sphere track 90 arc track star track micro start track as well as reactive track so i have all these we're going to cover every single one of them and go really in depth and we're going to do this without doing multiple takes you're going to see just raw aim and everything that we're going to discuss with it. Let's start start with Sphere Track 90. I really enjoy a lot of these new scenarios, and I've put a lot of time into them so far. They're a whole lot of fun and enjoyable. Remember, even with your settings, as you hop into Aim Lab, as you can tell, you can go to your options and change your crosshair that we mentioned before. You can change the opacity so you get more of a little bit of an outline there. You can change the length of it. You can make it a little smaller, kind of like what you see on Valorant or CSGO. You can change the th thickness if you like. Right now we kind of have that little bit of a healthy medium in the cross here. I'm going to save that. If we go back to the screen here, just know that you have a lot of functionality at your disposal. So in this first scenario, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply just start tracking and then we're going to break down everything that we saw here. I'll do my best to kind of talk throughout some of the scenarios. Some of them we'll just kind of let run, see what mistakes we make. And then we'll break down everything. As we continue onwards, we'll break down the specific scenario first and kind of talk in depth. I really wanted to get us first right into the nitty gritty of Aim Lab because there's so much here to break down. Scenarios will last a predetermined amount of time. So this is your first time on Aim Lab. You can see here as we're tracking something within our 90 degree peripheral. You don't have to hold mouse one. All you're going to do is simply track. And sometimes you'll have better days than others. And even while talking is a great exercise as we're talking now. Talking can be very important, especially when you're calming in a video game. So maybe you might have a friend next to you where you can have some calming and communication. So right there we got top placement, which is not half bad considering we were talking through it. Uh, we can definitely work to improve and everything that we're doing. Because talking can definitely make it a lot more of a struggle, and you'll continue to get better and better as you do this. So what you saw there was Sphere Track 90 Ultimate, which is perfect for scenarios where you're tracking individuals right in front of you. Maybe it's like Apex Legends, Quake, 
or various games where the target seems to be floating, whether it's Horizon popping your Q, maybe you're in Quake and you're, you know, doing your rocket jumps and kind of bouncing around. Sphere Track 90 Ultimate is going to be a fantastic scenario to getting you comfortable within the 90 degree surface right in front of you. This is maybe something that you might not be useful. Let's say if you're playing CSGO, or perhaps if you're playing Rainbow Six Siege, you may not be used to that full range of motion, specifically where targets, you've been very much taught in CSGO or Rainbow Six Siege, that you do not need to move above head level. Well, in certain games, you might need to expand upon that. Sphere Track 90 will get used to those that muscle control, and even as we saw there, we got used to it. I put mine on practice quite a bit. I don't log a ton of my scores. So this, while this says third play of this task, if you don't, if you feel really nervous about getting on the leaderboard, you probably saw it before. But don't be shy. You can always click on it and avoid putting this task on the leaderboard. And of course, maybe there's scenarios that you may play less. I know there's quite a few that'll play less, but I one of them that's coming up is one of my favorites. I think I have over 50 attempts on that I really, really enjoy specifically just because it really hones in on my aim. So let's go to the next task here. Arc track is a fantastic scenario where individual players in front of you will arc. And this is really, really helpful to improving and stabilize your aim because most targets are not going to just hover left and right strafes. And let's just go ahead and showcase that for all of you guys here. So what you want to do is work to keep your hand. So what you want to do is work to keep your hand as stable as possible. And if you have any sort of jittering, all it means is perhaps you're not warmed up. And it's why you do the scenario. You'll have moments of brilliance as you're tracking, as you're really kind of hitting your groove. And you'll have moments where you may not be as on point. Not a bad run. We look at the breakdown on the leaderboards. If I put in just a little bit of time, it would easily break a top 100 score on this. Not one I definitely focus on. It, now that I play it, <laughs> I kind of feel like I might need to put a little more time and effort into this one compared to the micro track one. Let's do that one. I know that one I have an easy top 100 on, but arc track is very beneficial towards your aim to helping smooth out the arc that you have with your with your aim. So it's not just left and right, up and down, but realizing that individual characters or players when they're jumping in front of you do have an arc to their overall movement. So let's go on into the next task here. Start track is fantastic for getting used to a nice stable movement bouncing left and right. You'll see the points bounce left and right. This is a really fun one. I really enjoy this scenario. This is great for beginners when you're trying to create mouse stability from various areas. Not a bad run. So tips and advice as you're working on this. And again, that was almost a top 100 score right there even. Another one I really enjoy. I know I've broken a top 100 before. I think I was probably did under practice. One of the biggest things here, I'm actually u utilizing a new sensitivity. Don't be afraid to practice and utilize a new sensitivity if you need it. 
it can be extremely beneficial to utilize a new sensitivity and realize, okay, maybe I need to go a little faster and go a little slower. In today's exercise, I'm utilizing a new one, which my sensitivity is 15.5 inches per 360 compared to where I was at. I think it was 13.42. So, but what I like about this sensitivity is that, as you can tell, it provides a